with a charismatic voice. This week we'll be discussing the contralto. I am going over eight primary voice types found in classical music, so if you're looking for a different voice, check out my other videos. The contralto is the lowest female voice type, and also the most rare. In fact, she sings so low that it isn't uncommon for her to be mistaken for a man. The contralto range goes from about E3 to F5, and I should point out that a large portion of this range is sung in her chest register. This means that it's a very thick and very deep color. Often singers can phonate above or below their range, but the pitches I've given here is where you're gonna find the most consistent sound. Because contraltos are so rare, there aren't that many roles that are written for them, and those that are written for them generally fall into two categories. The first category is matrons. These are your mothers, your grandmothers, perhaps your royal grandmother in the form of a baroness. And the second category is elderly crones. Think like the wise woman, or the witch that's been living in the mountains for 300 years. And very occasionally, a contralto will play a trouser role. Probably the most famous contralto role is Erda from The Ring Cycle by Wagner. She is the wise woman. There's also a huge list of madames or mothers that are contraltos, such as Madame de Croissy, the prioress of Dialogues of the Carmelites, Madame Flora from The Medium, the Baroness from Vanessa, Mother from The Consul, Ma Moss from The Tenderland, the Countess from Queen of Spades, Mother Goose from The Rake's Progress, and Mrs. Quickly from Falstaff. A fun example of a contralto that most people do know well is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Honestly, you don't see much true contralto singing in classical music these days, but if you want to hear a contralto live, I suggest you go to church and listen to some good, good soul music, or you could go flip on the radio to R&B. Contraltos aren't the popular rage in classical music right now, but they are thriving in soul and R&B. Some famous classical contraltos include Kathleen Ferrier, Marianne Anderson, who is one of my personal favorites to listen to. Listening to Marianne Anderson is like hugging a fluffy pillow. And a current well-known American contralto is Meredith Arwadi. Contraltos are arguably more famous in other genres. You have Stevie Nicks, Nina Simone. The first time I heard Nina Simone, I thought she was a dude. Alicia Keys and Adele. Now let's talk a little bit about what a contralto is great for and maybe not exactly optimal for. This voice is best for powerful low tones. The sound is thick, deep, and resonant, so much so that it is easily heard over an entire orchestra. This voice also has a unique color and sound. Since it is so rare, it has an unusual timbre and it will immediately grab people's attention. Perhaps because their low notes are so fantastic, it can be very difficult for a contralto to sing high. It's like taking this monster truck of low notes and hefting it up and pushing it into the high notes. A properly trained contralto can heft that up there once or twice for a nice climax. But if you ask that contralto to hold the monster truck up for a minute, that's just plain cruel and exhausting. Don't do it. I suggest, if you're writing for a contralto, to explore using her powerful low notes for dramatic moments. I've now covered four female voice types, coloratura, soprano, mezzo-soprano, and contralto. If you have any questions about female voice types, post them below. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about male voice types, so if you wanna learn more, hit subscribe. You're my